Have you ever had a childhood dream? A dream where you are the hero, saving the world, helping people, fighting evil. For me, the Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening was the embodiment of that dream. And I also have another dream, where I make videos people like. And if you are one of those people, please don't hesitate to like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks in advance. So, I was just a small boy when I first saw original Game Boy in an old Quail catalog. And it was bundled with Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. I did everything from begging my parents to winning a lottery and finally I had it. Just a few seconds later, an opening screen and I was hooked. I mean really hooked. Just like that lunker in a fishing minigame. It took me months to get through that game. And it was those times with no internet so no quick checking strategy or secrets or anything really. Some places took me weeks to get through, like Face Cave, just because you had to know by poking which wall is the correct one to blow up. And there were other pitfalls. This game was hard at the time. You had to know how to defeat a boss without any guide or even personal experience. Just trial and error. For me personally, it was one of the best gaming experiences of my life. I still remember it all. The sound of clearing a dungeon room or the joy of finding an item. The noise a wall makes when it's ready to be demolished. The sound when a dungeon room had a key. Never before anything felt like this. And the game world was simply amazing. Full of secrets and unreachable areas. So, how did you get here? A storm. You wash up on the beach and a beautiful maiden finds you. And very soon you find out that the island you're on is called Koholint and that you cannot leave until you wake the windfish. And yes, it's all conveyed to you by Zelda Iconic Owl. So you quickly steal yourself and get on with the adventure. Throughout beaches, forests, plains and mountains you find dungeons that give you additional powers like jumping, more strength or dashing. The island slowly opens up its secrets, as you defeat monsters guarding instruments made to wake the windfish. And what awaits you after is certain to give you nightmares. The Switch version is a remake of the original Game Boy title. So what changed compared to the old black and white version of the game? Well, for the most part it's a very precise remake, keeping most of the bones intact. There are a few slip-ups, but the game more than makes up for them by adding new gameplay elements to already pretty beefy original. Not to mention the graphics. Everything looks very close to the original and at the same time upgrades visuals to super cute waxy cartoon. I love that the game's producer Mr. Aonuma decided on that particular art style. Even the original anime cutscenes got totally redrawn and look super awesome. So what's to like about the reimagining? First of all, the updated control scheme. You no longer need to clutch that sword in your hand. It's simply always ready under a button and the same goes for the shield. This reduces switching between items. Alongside that comes redesign of some enemies, attack patterns and placement. This works like a double-edged sword sometimes, making certain areas of the game more difficult. At the same time I found a lot of bosses to be... easier. Fortunately, the game adds a harder difficulty mode with no hard pickups. The plentiful gameplay elements existing in the original got heavily modified and upgraded too. For example, the trendy game is now more dynamic and you kinda have to figure it out anew. It has new prizes that change during the course of the game. At the same time the crane mechanics changed and I was often left with the feeling that it was screwing me over. Oh well. The fishing minigame got upgraded as well with many new fish and lots of prizes to get. They even added lures to give you more control over getting those swimming bastards. Secret seashell collecting also got upgraded and now you have to find 50 in total. And there are a few new items to get. Also, the shop got upgraded with new items. Great all around. Alongside obvious upgrades, you also have new elements like Dampeshack, which replace the camera mouse. I miss making Pictos. It's a minigame in itself. You reorganize the dungeon layout and complete challenges for prizes. Home run! Also, figurines. You find them all in trendy game and can put them on display in various houses. Super fun! So, what did I dislike about the remake? Just nuances, and only a few things. First of all, the modernized engine allows you to save and load anywhere in the world, so you never have to get there again. And I really miss that. It makes the world very easy to traverse. Couple that with the fact that after death you just retry and find yourself in the same place is making the game even easier. 
Fortunately, you still have to backtrack in the dungeons. Also, alongside the fact that the game is 3D now, some weird collision detection takes place. I miss the old sword action a lot, hitting everything from behind obstacles and stuff. Guess you can't have everything. Another thing that got downgraded, I think, is when you pick up a piece of power. In the old version, the enemy got that juicy smoky slide across the map. Now we got this barely visible force effect. It made me not go through the power up as often. Same goes with the magic powder. It used to burn for quite a while before imploding. Now it's too fast, I think. Bear with me, as those are simple cosmetic changes and I am a graphic designer, so it sticks to me. And don't get me wrong, those shader effects work really well. Just nostalgia, I guess. So to put everything into a small package. I love the new remake. It catapulted me to the times when I was just a small boy, totally mesmerized, playing black and green Game Boy games. And when I finished the game, it made me cry a little. Just a little, a shed tear for the time lost and already passed. I hope this would be a reminder to all. To always live to the fullest. To make every moment count. Because there is only a finite amount of them. In the second part of the video, I will make a comprehensive list of items with their whereabouts, so stay tuned. As always, if you like the content, consider leaving a like, comment or subscribe for more content like this. Stay awake, fusion powering down.